Okay, so today we're looking at repairing or the repair to the spinning face on the Mark 1 Orient Maco. I believe it's the same process pretty much for the Mark 2. The difference, the most noticeable difference is probably between the Mark 1 and the Mark 2 that the Mark 1 has this separate day selector crown which the Mark 2 doesn't have. One quick and important note is, as you know, as people will tell, I'm not a professional. Um, I like fixing things myself, and this is a sort of a fairly low value oldish watch. Tools for this job are the standard case back removal tool. This was a, a cheapie off eBay, which seems to work absolutely fine, and a spring bar removal tool with the slim pointed end as well. Okay, so removing the case back on this Mark I Orient Mako. First, I remove the strap, in this case, blue NATO strap. For those with the original steel bracelet, you'll obviously have to pop the, um, the pins off. These, incidentally, are 22 millimeters with a 0.8 millimeter tips on them. To pop the back off, pretty straightforward, we take our tool, align it with the lugs, and gently wind anti-clockwise. Once it's loose, we should just be able to tease it loose with our thumbs. Okay, pop the back off. You can see here the rubber o-ring. Obviously, when we're putting it back together, we need to make sure this is seated neatly to maintain waterproofness. The Mark I Mako sports this 46943 Orient movement, which is used in a number of their watches. To solve the spinning face issue, we'll need to pop the movement out of the mm -hmm. case. And to do that, we'll need to remove the, the crown. We don't need to remove the day selector. To remove the crown, we pull out the, we unscrew this, pull it out all the way and a small lever will pop up here. When we push down that lever, we'll be able to withdraw the stem of the crown and then remove the movement. Okay, so let's do this. Unwind it all the way, pop it out. And then we can see if you look very closely the little lever has popped up there and it's a gentle push of that will allow the crown to be withdrawn. Let's give that a go. There we go. That just comes up there like that. And then very gently we can pop the movements out. Okay, there we have the movement out of the case. Now in order to fix the spinning face issue, which is caused by the loss of the little lugs that are still on the underside of the face, I've actually used a little couple of dabs of silicon glue along here. Not very elegant, but it's not an expensive watch and it's not worth paying for professional repair for me at this point. Reassembly is just the reverse of assembly. We pop the movement gently back into the case. There we go. Make sure that is all correctly aligned. The crown very gently pops back into its hole. There's no, no force needed. It's just about finding the right position. Popping that in. There we go. Is that in? And that can be wound back. Let's make a time adjustment. We make a very gentle nudge to this lever here. Now again, if you're going to do this properly, you'd use all the proper equipment. Um, you'd time it against computerized clocks, etc. But I found that a 
very, very tiny tweak of this lever, being very careful not to upset the mechanism in the balance spring below, actually works as intended. You can see the tiny little point on the adjustment lever. If it goes towards the plus, to speed things up slightly, towards the minus, slows things down slightly. I'm losing ever such a small amount of time, so I'm going for a very, very gentle nudge. Super, super carefully. And we'll see how that goes. Next, we make sure we put our rubber O ring back to put a proper seal in place, maintain waterproofness. And then, of course, we can screw the case back on. This goes on, obviously. Clockwise. Using the case back tool for final tightening. These things don't have to be super tight. Some people also talk about putting a thinnest smear of Vaseline around the o-ring as well to help keep that seal tight. Now that's all back together. We'll see how the time adjustment goes. But we can adjust further if required. So there we go, simple repair to an old but trusty watch where the value of the watch doesn't really make it cost effective to use professional.